Manti, and you find the center of that piece, which is here, and you put it onto your blemish. And then, now, it will rotate from this central point. So you need to change, you need to make it match up with another blemish. There it is. Oh, it's missed. Okay, so now it's fairly matched up. The big thing to keep in mind is it is not going to 100% match up every single time. If you try to do that, you're going to hurt yourself. Now you make this original piece back to 100%. Now obviously this is not a perfect line. Uh, there is, you know, you can actually see the human brain sees this straight line. So if I was to leave this as it is, it wouldn't look right because nothing would puzzle piece back together. So what we do is we create the illusion. So make your lower layer a color. Go back up to your top layer. Oh, this is just an overlay. You just double click on it and it'll overlay. Uh, go to layer for, uh, your uh, top layer. And with the eraser brush, take it up to about a 70. And I want you to make a line that is not even doesn't matter how you do it. You can just do it straight like this, or you can make it a little bit choppy. It really doesn't make any difference. Now go back to your previous layer and turn off the color. Do you see how much more difficult it is to see where the break is? You can double check it. Looks pretty good. If you have specific marks, see there's only a tiny little change. If you have specific marks that, that are important and you think are gonna get affected, you can clean them up, but that looks pretty good. That has now puzzle pieced it together. Um, by the way, when you use the brush, make sure you use a solid brush, not an airbrush brush. I know it's tempting to use that airbrush and wash it over, but it's not going to work. You will notice because it needs to have a cleanness to it. For example, look, you can see, you can see the canvas marks. If you use an airbrush, it will mix those canvas marks and it will look a mess. Then you take layer 4 and 3 and you put them together. Use Command E. And that now combines these two pieces together. And that's one piece. Save your file. Now you do this with the entire document. Go across one piece at a time and piece each puzzle piece together. I'm going to come back when I've done the top strip. Okay, so here we have all of the top layers um, in Photoshop all pieced together and you see it as one document. Um, hopefully you have uh, done the same and you saved your document. That's the most important. Save, save, save. Uh, if you don't have your rulers already showing, go to uh, view and turn on your rulers and you need to pull down a guide and what I want you to do is click on your main layer and uh, transform it and I want you to try and get as, as level as you possibly can with this first layer. This is so important because everything underneath it is going to grow from what you've done here. You have to try and be fairly accurate if you can um, because obviously this is the most important part. So once you've got it transformed and it has uh, adjusted uh, you should be done and you can get rid of your guide just hold on to it and throw it up in the air uh, you may see a few little things that you don't like uh, you can see on here there's some string that I've got um, from when I scanned in it looks like beautiful actually but uh, you can go to your clone tool and you can clone a certain area and you can get rid of it uh, depending on how fussy you are uh, you're going to want to be getting of a whole bunch of other stuff, um, dog hairs being one of them, uh, but um, I'm not going to go through and uh, show you all of that process, I'm just going to show you these basic parts. Um, you will be amazed how much you can get away with. Uh, it doesn't have to be 100% accurate because this scan is enormous.
And um, as you'll see when I post the, the final piece, um, you're not going to be able to tell that this part right here is not perfection. It will look perfect. And um, not only that, um, but you will see the painting as a whole. You're not going to just see this one little area. Uh, so it will be way beyond what a regular camera can take anyway. So don't be too hard on yourself, okay? And don't worry about all this stuff at the top. We're gonna to clean that up at the end too. So now you can see the top layer is done. All you gotta do is you've gotta piece all of these pieces together. It's gonna to take a while, uh, maybe, a, a, I would say maybe an hour or two. Uh, the more you do it, the faster you're going to get. That's all I can tell. Okay, we're just about at the end now of doing this. I'm just putting in the last piece right here. Um, and we are going to merge the two um, items together by doing Command E on your Mac. And uh, if we zoom out, you'll see that for the most part, we have most of this image now in place. Now, there's no point in, uh, in it being in Photoshop if you're not going to take advantage of it. And um, sometimes uh, you can use that to your advantage on little spaces. Um, for example, uh, right here, uh, we can use the clone tool, and instead of having to scan in these, the extra piece, we can actually fake it in. I uh, use the clone tool over here, and you mimic areas that you want. Again, always use a solid paintbrush. Don't use a brush stroke paintbrush. That's important, this uh, solid one right here. Um, because it, it will, you will be able to see um, the strokes. Uh, you'll be able to see the brush, the area, and that's no good. Um, especially when you're talking at such high resolution like this. Right here, so just pull from this area. see how you like rebuilding it and honestly um, in a very short period of time uh, you won't even know where it's at you it, it may look very visible to your eye right now but there is no way for one that your um, the person viewing it is going to see it I mean can you see it now I mean it's all I mean it's invisible and uh, you can go up to these other pieces up here even a piece as large as this as long as it's a a regular color you can pretty much um, get away with just um, cloning and um, getting rid of the image you, what you don't want is repeat patterns you can see a, a few repeat patterns going on there uh, you can break those up um, is this cheating yes it, uh, it is a little bit but sometimes uh, why not use the advantage of these tools if you've got them um, because unless you're um, printing uh, this this piece out at 100% uh, there is no way, there's no way anyone is ever going to know that this is, you know, that this has been cloned in. So we'll just keep going. I'm trying to go as fast as I can. Make, make sure you have no too many repeat, not too many repeats in, in the painting. But there you can see now that's that's painted in, and you're never going to know on such a huge painting. Uh, the next thing you need to do is create your guides uh, that form around the painting so that you can prepare to crop. Um, as you can see, look straight down here. There's quite a lot of, of inaccuracy in how I've scanned. Uh, like I said, it is not always a, a perfection and it doesn't need to be it's just a very high quality uh, scanning so I've obviously done one piece of this wrong that looks about right and so uh, you get your crop tool and you crop to this area and then crop it <laughs> takes a second it's a large image it's a, it's a, it's a gig for the image currently until you flatten it. And there you have it, you've finished the image. It's at 300 dpi, it's all scanned in at 100%, an incomparable uh, piece.
to taking a photograph or anything like that. When you save the file, um, I recommend you either save it as a TIFF or an EPS, whatever your preference is. And uh, there you have it. Hope that helped.